Hi there, this is Doug with North Table Mountain Christmas Lights, and in this video we're going to look at the general overview of the design and construction of my snowflake tower. The snowflake tower itself is loosely based on an ASAP pole, and it's 18 feet tall at the top snowflake. The snowflakes themselves are the Living Light Show 36 inch flakes from Biscoyo, and at the back of each snowflake I have a metal frame which bolts to the structure. So just undoing um, two nuts, you can take the snowflakes off of the frame pretty easily. So it works very well for setup and takedown. The tower itself is basically two sections. You have the upper section, which has that kind of square rectangular frame around it, and the lower section for the lower three flakes. As you can kind of see on that upper section, on the outside I have two support poles, and those are new. I only had one previously, but now I have one on both sides. And what they do is they help anchor and hold down the vertical load from the guy wires. So I have a lot of guy wires, I think, believe 15 total, support this with all the wind we get here. And those 15 guy wires help anchor and support the tower. And as you can see, I'm also at the edge of my driveway, so I don't really have room to put guy wires in the middle of my driveway. So the way I do that is I do have an anchor point up here that goes into the joist below um, that run on the roof there. And that has two guy wires, which kind of give me this angle over here to support against the strong winds I do get from that direction. If we take a look at the center here, where we go down, um, you can see there's no portable hole or anything. Um, I actually have footings into the ground, so I have footing for the outer poles, obviously the center, and the outside there. And I've connected my controller over here, and this is pretty standard. If you've seen my other videos, you've seen these boxes. They all look about the same. So I have a Raspberry Pi here, F16V2, and a little uh, thermostat there that controls the operation of the fan. So I said this is based on an ASAP pole, so we can see here the winch assembly of the ASAP pole. This one is a thousand pound winch with the mounting plate from Biscoyo that that's attached to, and that pushes up on the push pole, which just like my Megatree video is made from rigid conduit and not EMT because that can handle a lot more load, and I can put that little metal coupler that comes with the conduit, and I can put that on there and saw it off flush with the end of the pipe to give a lot of surface area on that hook. So if we take a look here at the back side of it, you can see when we crank this up, that push pull, we're going to go all the way up there to the topper, and it's a steel topper from Biscoyo. Um, nothing fancy on it, I believe it's just a 30, 32 string uh, steel topper, and I have bolted on that that top cross piece, which is one inch square tubing with a very thick wall. I can't remember the wall thickness, um, but it was the thickest one that the metal uh, fabrication store had. So I have that thick wall piece on the top section and this lower section here, this lower horizontal piece that goes across. Again, it's the very thick, heavy wall steel tubing. And you can see how those just use muffler clamps on these lower ones to attach to the frame, both at the center and on the outside section here. And so you can see all the guy wires up there that support both at the topper. I have three there. I have three here coming off the, uh, the center, plus an extra that goes up to the roof here to that one there on the roof. If we go back up to the top, you see on the outside, both on the uh, outer edges on the right and left side, I have two guy wires, and they go all the way out as far as I can, um, out towards the street there, and they're wrapped uh, back here behind my fence. And those crank down, and that allows me to 
put a nice vertical load that keeps twisting on it and that's where I say this transfers that vertical load to that horizontal piece which is bolted into this outside perimeter and that transfers the load down here to the both the outside there and the outside pole here so that really helps transfer the weight and allow me to put a little bit more uh, force on the guy wires to hold up to all the twisting and then each one of those outside poles as you can see has I'm just using a floor flange there that I've painted to help uh, keep the rust down and attached some um, S hooks on it and we have guy wires on that as well to keep that from twisting and I only have two on those because that's all that seems about all it needs there if you look at the frame of these snowflakes you can see we have this metal frame and this is a change from previous years uh, previous years those pieces that are kind of at angles were parallel so I actually had um, this here was the top and instead of here well actually I should say it was here in the middle it was split between them was the top but I like having this the drumsticks and this was inspired I believe by Ron Howard and his sequences where he kinda had the snowflakes acting as drumsticks so for me I had to rotate the snowflakes which meant I had to rotate the frames so um, I actually had this ground um, the mounting plate here was taken off and rotated and re-welded back on the frames so you can see in this case I'm just bolting through this lower support piece and this just this lower piece just holds that lower snowflake and that's just bolted um, to the pipe with the muffler clamps and the snowflake just bolts directly to that here at the center pole I'm just using a muffler clamp that the snowflake just bolts directly to again with the frame so very similar idea this one bolts to that horizontal cross piece just like the other ones here um, we're using same thing where we're using a muffler clamp along the center pipe I just had to extend it a little bit further so you can see the bolts just keep it a little bit further from the frame this one on that end just bolts directly to the vertical piece I have a little flange that's welded onto it and that bolts on there and at the top, or again, same type of thing with the muffler clamp directly on the pole, the ASAP pole. And at the very top, we are just bolted directly to the upper cross piece. So very straightforward. They all kind of bolt the same way, give or take, same idea. But that's how this thing all holds up. And if you've seen the Megatree video, you'd be familiar with this type of uh, mounting system for the guy wires that attaches to the ASAP pole but still allows movement of the push pole um, and your three anchor points and of course I'm using this one on the right has two guy wires because I don't have a good position with my driveway to have one um, ideally would be positioned somewhere in the middle of the driveway but I can't put an anchor there so we split it by having one go up to the roof and one kind of comes behind here into the ground well, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video has been helpful and given you some insight on the design and construction of the Snowflake Tower. In general, I don't think it's as complicated as it appears to be. As a review, we have the ASAP pole in the center, and then the two outer poles help distribute the load and weight of the tower down to the ground. I have the frame on the upper section to help stabilize that, and the snowflakes themselves have the mount behind it, and they just bolt to either the frame or to the pole, using the muffler clamps. Next year I hope to do a little time-lapse video of this which will help you guys I think visualize how I set this up and take it down so look forward to that next season and if you have any questions please leave a comment and I'll do my best to try and answer them.